guys, what's going on? What's up, Odie? Hey, Benny! Happy anniversary, man! What are you, like, 200 years old now or something? Get out of here, you punks! Just ignore him, Ben. They're trying to get a rise out of us. You want me to give Ryan over at the sheriff's yeah, office? Yeah, tell him what? They're here, they're drinking again. That Jay-Z is just like his father. They're not old enough to drink. God help me. I wish there was a better answer. There is a better answer. So, which is our assignment? The people out here or the people in there? Well, it's all connected. Where's Monica? She's assigned elsewhere. Why? Because this is a musical theater. Oh. You know, Herb, it still wants to sing that god-awful thing from Pippin. Right. White gloves and all. He says it's emblematic. Emblematic? Emblematic of what? Herbert, I guess. That gives him three and a half songs. The duet with Naomi. God help us. Wally, get the coffee going. Because they're going to be here any minute. Herbert gets three solos? You all get three solos. Plus a duet with Naomi. That puts him a half song ahead. You had an extra half song in the last show, Calvin. Ben, it's not so much the numbers as it is a quality of life issue. Does anyone out there really want to hear magic to do? Yes, Calvin, they do. Those people out in the dark yearn for a powerhouse opener like magic to do. That's why we come to the theater. To share our passions, to resonate with the past, to tune our empathetic bones to the pitch of humanity. What on earth is that, Herbert? This, my dear, is 32 ounces of purified water from the Seychelles mixed with kelp, seaweed, and finely crushed coral. Here, have a sip and feel the heavy velour drapes of fatigue part like the Red Sea. No, I like velour. Oh, forgive me. Forgive me, those doctors. They wanted to push the surgery up. I said, no, 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 I can't. We have a performance. Your spastic bowel acting up again, Naomi? My darling husband, Alan, refused to leave until the doctors answered all his questions about my hammer toe. <laughs> Can we please get it together, people? Hey! Hey, JG! Oh, get away from the window! Goodness, what's going on? I'm telling you, Ben, they shouldn't be allowed to hang around here. It's hard to tell which is in worse shape, this community or this community theater. They're both running out of hope, Angel Boy. And if they don't get it back and in a hurry, the final curtain is going to come down on both. When you walk down the road, heavy burden. I will rise and I will walk with you. I'll walk with you till the sun don't even shine. Walk with you every time I tell you I'll walk with you. Believe me, I'll walk with you. Please! Calling the police will only get another report written and send our insurance rates higher. Oh, you'll figure it out, Ben. You always do. Now, about my song for the finale. You know, it was a different world 50 years ago. Ben Horner? Oh, we're here. Where do you want us to set up? Oh, my goodness, that is good good service. I just called you an hour ago. Uh, please, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I had an inspiration this afternoon and hired a video crew to document our 50th anniversary. Uh, uh, Tess, Gloria, and Andrew, right? Right. This is the board of directors. And acting company. Of the Egyptian theater. Beautiful dreamer, I come to thee.
starlight and dewdrops are waiting for thee. Sounds of the rude world heard in the day, lulled by the moonlight, have all passed away. He has a lovely voice. And he seems like a very nice man, too. My song, list while I woo. Wally, how many times do I have to tell you I can't rehearse with that light in my eyes? Sorry. <sighs> I'm surrounded by imbeciles. Any more observations, little angel? Tell us what this theater means to you, Naomi. Camera, is there enough fill light? Mm, plenty. Well, my first role here at the Egyptian was Sleeping Beauty. That's back when we were doing children's theater, before the neighborhood went bad. Before the children went bad. <laughs> Tragic, really. Anyway, now I specialize in playing strong women. Medea in Medea, Joan of Arc in Joan of Arc, Lysistrata in Lysistrata. My husband, Alan, says that's the only thing I can do. And, of course, he's right. He always is. But even back in the beginning, I managed to find the complexity and emotional center of every character I played. No one will soon forget my little Red Riding Hood. Well, that tells us what you mean to the theater, Naomi. What does the theater mean to you? Well, is there really any difference, dear? Dostoevsky said, there is nothing more human than the urge to confess. That's been my credo. I see the stage as a confessional, a chance to break through mendacity, as Tennessee himself might have said. Tennessee Williams? In all humility, the demands of my time would tear apart a lesser man. Financial responsibility, social obligations. Taxidermy is a jealous mistress. But that is why I put this theater first. Because ultimately, it's about fellowship. A band of brothers. Which is why it is essential that we include that number from Pippin. What's a Pippin? I'll tell you later. Cut! I felt very good. Excellent. I'm sorry, did I overstep my boundaries? Latrina! That's a very unusual name. My mama thought it was a roaming goddess. I'm like, whatever. At least people will never forget my name. So you are the newest member of the company. Yeah, so it's up to me to, you know, shake things up a bit. Like last year when I played Juliet, I gave her the sexy kind of Christina Aguilera slinky thing. Romeo. Oh, Romeo. Didn't I... Anyway, I can't remember the rest, but it brought something really fresh to a tired old love scene. That must have been very enlightening. Well, I did have 12 years of training at Miss Harriet Grubb's dancing school in East St. Louis. Do you know the place? I can't say that I do, baby. Oh, well, it's gone now. Miss Grubb was arrested for running a meth lab in her basement. I guess I was the last star she ever launched. Isn't that sad? Oh, for so many reasons. <laughs> you see, any dentist can fill a cavity. But I'm not just any dentist. I like to think of myself as Dr. Fun. <laughs> you come in my office and you can get a filling, uh, you can get a song, you can get a dance, you can get a couple of jokes. <laughs> uh, now, you may not believe this, but until I was in junior high, I was boring. Snooze City. <laughs> and then one day, I found my gift. The fickle finger of fate pointed at me and zingo, baritone, it just happened. So I opened my mouth and... Oh, Shenandoah, I long to see you. Roll away, you might... Cut. D just cut. Mm, cut. It's very nice. Hi, Wally. 
you have a minute for an interview? Oh, hey, you don't want to talk to me. I'm strictly backstage. I don't know about that. You seem to be a pretty essential part of this place. Me? Essential? Oh, no. Now, all I do is I build the sets and I run the lights. I, I, I open the box office and sell concessions. And uh, I order supplies. Uh, I clean the dressing rooms and answer the phones. <laughs> but it's general stagehand stuff. Anybody could do it. Well, Ben relies upon you pretty heavily. Well, I'd do anything for Ben. He's been more of a father to me than my old man ever was. I have to clean this up, you punk! Why do you keep doing this? That is it. I've had it. Something has to be done about those kids. We could hire a security guard. Security guards cost money, Wally. Come on. So does repainting. I want them gone. Do you understand? Whatever it takes, I want those kids gone. I'll see what I can do. It wasn't easy 50 years ago, either. Oh, hi, Tess. I didn't hear you come in. Well, hear this, baby. I'm an angel sent by God. What are you talking about? You heard me. I am an angel. What do you want from me? You're a good man, Ben Horner, but you've lost your way. Do you remember why you started this theater? Yeah, I, I wanted to uh, celebrate the kids. Now you say they're your enemies. It's a different world now. Yes, it is. This is a world of fear and anger, where people would rather turn their backs than extend their hands in compassion. And that's a sad state of affairs, because God made human beings to dream together and to inspire each other. You used to believe that, Ben. A long time ago, maybe. Seventeen years, to be exact. The last time you tried to change somebody's life. A disaster. The young man was so angry and so lost. You gave him a job and tried to show him a new direction. Yeah, he nearly destroyed this place. It was the drugs. I probably could have done more about it, but I had to... The point is, you tried. What happened after that was not your fault. But the sins of the father are not the sins of the son. Jay-Z? That's right. Unlike his father, he could be a leader. He could help to change things around here. And so could you change things how am i supposed to do that ask god for inspiration and then use it to inspire others it's all there if you're listening are you listening I can hear it. I can hear it, Tess. It's a song. Oh, did I gotta write it down? Ben. Ben. She's an angel, Wally. Can you see her? Look. Right there. Are you all right, Ben? How? Oh. Wally. I've just seen the future of the theater. No, no. Actually, I heard it. It's all in my head. It's a sound that just came to me, and it's going to change everything. I'm going to get you a glass of water. I, I'll be terrific. Oh, i got to write this down. A song that will change everything, Tess? That's right, baby. Oh, no. No, baby. He ran out of time, Tess. 
What's happening, Tess? I don't know, baby. I just don't know. Poor Wally. It's like losing a father. Tess, Ben was supposed to change everything. But now Ben isn't here. Are we finished? No, Gloria, we're not finished. When God makes a plan, he sees it through. So if it's not going to be plan A with Ben, it'll be plan B with somebody else. I'm painting over this, mister. Why would I want you to? It's an old flat. Maybe you don't like my art. No, I do, actually. I like it a lot. I thought maybe you needed some, some supplies. So you just came out here just to give me free paint? Yeah. No. I don't believe you. You want something. They all do. Who's they? Adults. I mean, they're always like, hey, get the hell out of here and get a job. Do something productive. What are you, a, a gangbanger? Is that what your parents tell you? Yeah. My dad says that to me every day. Man, what are you talking about, Jay-Z? You don't even have a dad. <laughs> hey, shut up, Odie. <laughs> Look. Enjoy the supplies. See ya. Are we canceling the show? Ben would have wanted us to continue. First thing he taught me is that the show goes on no matter what. He had no equal. Teacher, director, friend. When he took me under his wing, I didn't know Stephen Foster from Gwen Stefani. He taught me that there were a lot of great songs written before I was even born. Compatriot, leader. He believed in this little troop of thespians when nobody else would. Our impresario. He was our Aristotle. And this little theater, our Lyceum. And now we are a ship without a rudder. So when life's bright there are not enough metaphors in the English language to express how much we loved him. Rough wind at Mona's love. Grief too sad for soul. This town I used to love the Egyptian. Back when we we did children's plays. On the first Saturday of every new season, winter, spring, summer, fall, like this theater was the only place people wanted to be. Especially the kids. But now, people, we have to cut to the chase. Now, Ben always said, the show must go on. I agree. And I say we do it in his honor. Well, in that case, I make a motion to carry on with the show as a memorial to Ben Horner. Don't we need, like, a director? Of course. We need to appoint an interim artistic director, preferably someone with her finger on the pulse of the broader theatrical community. You mean someone like you? I would be honored to serve you. Uh, excuse me, but... You don't talk. You take notes. You're not on the board. True. But the theater's charter prohibits the appointment of officers. Now, if you want a new artistic director, you're going to have to put it to a vote. Fine, then we'll vote. Naomi, it's spelled just like it sounds. Uh, excuse us. Ben hired us for the whole week, and we're wondering if you want us to continue filming. Damn the torpedoes full steam ahead. Marvelous. You'll be here to capture the beginning of a new era for the Egyptian. A brand new course. Bigger, better, and brighter than ever. Listen, uh, 
Wally. What happens if there's a tie? Well, um, Ben always had five members on the board to make sure that that didn't happen. We don't have anybody left. I make a motion we add Wally to the board. Isn't there anybody else in town we could choose? Yes, but the sooner we select a director, the sooner we find out who gets the lead in the spring production. Second! Second. <laughs> Wally, welcome to the board. Thanks. <laughs> well, thanks, I think. <laughs> On with the vote. Um, okay, folks, uh, just a reminder, the bylaws say that you cannot vote for yourselves. This must be very frustrating for you. What? Having all this artistic energy and no place to put it. Well, I'm putting it where I want to put it. It's vivid. A lot of anger in there. Yeah, well, life sucks. Well, maybe if you put that anger into real art, people would pay attention. Well, what do you mean? Like those people in there. <laughs> I don't need nothing from them. Well, maybe they need something from you. Latrina. Yo, whoever voted for me, I won't let you down. I don't under... I don't understand. There must be some mistake. Stop babbling. What's the verdict? Uh, well, by a vote of four to one, it would appear that the new artistic director is me. Plan B? I guess so. So, Calvin, this is a very interesting turn of events, Wally being elected artistic director. How do you think that happened? Well, I'll tell you how it happened. I voted for Wally because he was the lesser of three evils. But apparently, I wasn't having an original thought. Wally is good people, open to good ideas, impressionable, malleable, easily led. What do you think you should do about the kids outside? Ignore them and their childish cries for attention. I voted for him because he's like, you know, not Calvin, Herbert, or Naomi. And the kids? You ever heard that song, Looking for Love in All the Wrong Places? No man is an island. John Dunn. I truly believe that. In fact, I think it would be fair to say that I've striven to conform my whole life to that basic principle. I'm sorry, what was the question again? Uh, I, I, I think that I have what I need. I asked myself, Naomi, who is the best person here to lead this theater into the 21st century? But since it couldn't be me, I needed to know who was second best. And then it dawned on me it could only be one person. And it was... Wally? Yes, that's it. And as for the children, well... It must be tragic to be so desperate for other people's approval. Wow. Me. Artistic director. I hope I'm up to it. Oh, you're a natural, baby. You'll be just fine. Not an easy job. I used to watch Ben dealing with all the, uh... He used to call them personalities. I hope I learned something. Well, I think you've got a lot of personalities outside of this theater that could use some attention, too. 
with those punks. It was a stress they put on Ben. Ben wanted to help them. Oh, no. Even Ben knew a lost cause when he saw one. Did he? Think patriotic! Wally! Wally. Wallace. Such a masculine Celtic name. Have I ever told you how much I love your name? Uh, no. no. Well, anyway. I think I've got it. The grand finale. Since this is a tribute to Ben, why not use one of the theater's high watermarks? My Joan. He loved me burning at the stake. Yes, he did. So much, he lit the match himself. Herbert, that's lowering the bar. You loved it. I know you did. <sighs> loved is a strong word. Oh, yeah. Mr. Artistic Director, since clearly you are still in need of pitches for the finale, why not make it a fitting capstone to Ben's life in the theater? Such as? Well, I have the perfect, perfect hood ornament for the Rolls Royce that was Ben's life. Two words, Siegfeld Follies. Siegfeld Follies? Exactly. The master showman, Reed Ben, producing for our edification, eye-catching Siegfeld girls, gowns, gems, peacock feathers, and jazz. Frankie and Johnny were lovers, lordy how they could love. Swore they'd be true to each other, true to the skies above. He was her man, but he was doing her you know, wrong. You know, we have to do Frankie and Johnny. My boyfriend Johnny can play Johnny. Does anyone smell smoke? Oh my God, look, the garbage can's oh. on fire. Oh, oh. get the fire oh. extinguisher, oh. hurry up. Wally, I can't work like this. The safety of our company's at stake. Wally, when are you going to do something about those street punks? That's right. Stop being indecisive. Fine. You want action? I'll give you action. Now listen up. This is Wally Nyberg, artistic director of the Egyptian theater. This theater and one block in each direction is now officially a punk-free zone. So take your crime elsewhere. This area is reserved for theater goers, and they have the right to spend an evening out without any trouble. If you want to buy a ticket, the box office is open every day. Otherwise, take a hike! Get an elephant! Tomorrow, at 10 a.m., we rehearse the grand finale, and there will be no dirty dancing, no Joan of Arc, and no Zigzag. It'll be whatever I say it is. Don't be late! Wally, are you okay? Never felt better. What about the finale? I have no idea. Wally! They finally did it! Those punks of yours broke in! Huh? Just like you asked, 10 a.m. sharp. Everything's trashed. The dressing rooms are even worse. This is all your fault, Wally. Yeah, Ben never would have inflamed those hoodlums like you did. The Ben Horner era lasted 50 years. The Wally Nibel era, one day. What do you mean? The show can't go on now. What's the point? This was supposed to be rehearsal for the grand finale. Well, apparently it was our real finale. Yes, this is terrible. Oh, no, little angel. We're finally making progress. What kind of an idiot provokes a gang of teenage delinquents? That would be Wally. Oh, I suppose we're the idiots who gave him the job. So, I guess it's all over. Not if you help them through this. You're their leader now, aren't you? The leader needs followers. They're gone. Theater's destroyed. Wally. It's done. It's time for this theater and me to 
to fade away. No, Wally. Just leave, okay? Thy worldly task hast done. Home art gone, and day and thy wages. Golden lads and girls all must, as chimney sweepers come to dust. Herbert, in all the years we've been working together, performing side by side, how come you never once stopped by my office for a cleaning? Never once, said Calvin. My gums are bleeding. Could you take a look? Calvin, as much as I admire your gift with bicuspids and molars, I've always felt that there should be a separation between church and state. You never trusted me, did you? My Lancome. My cranberry cocktail. We go out not in a blaze of glory, but in tatters and shreds. This cost me like four bucks. Maybe it's a wonder we lasted this long. I mean, with a dentist playing Lear? Insanity. Hey, how about a shrew playing Joan of Arc? What? The oldest living Ophelia in the history of the theater. Ungrateful, self-centered. Pot pulling the kettle? That's right, you fat ham. Latrina, now there's a name that could launch a thousand ships. Hey, Latrina. Talking of ham, why don't you try pushing yourself away from a table once in a while? Trained monkeys could have given a better performance. This is insufferable. I can't wait to get out of here. Well, then, let's call the demo crew and raise the building tonight. Wait, guys. Look. What's that? Oh, my. Curtain up, folks. What is this? Enter the angel. The angel? Putting on a private performance scripted by God for an audience of five right here on this stage that has filled the holes in your heart for years. I don't understand. You're a... Yes, Calvin, I'm an angel. Here with a message for you. You have a very big voice, but you have a very small self-concept. You sing on this stage because in your heart you believe no one finds you interesting. God knows that? Yes, baby. <sighs> I'm a dentist. Colorless job, colorless man. Except for my voice. When I sing, people think I'm special, interesting, charismatic. God wants you to know that he finds you interesting every moment of your life. In every little thing you do, filling cavities or singing, God loves you, Calvin. He loves me. And you, Naomi, for all these years, you've played strong characters on this stage because at home, you felt weak, didn't you? Are you? Did God send you too? Yes, he did. Because he knows that you've been at the mercy of someone, have you? Yes. Yes, I have. Alan. Your husband? You told us he was Mr. Wonderful. It was easier than telling you the truth. Easier than admitting I'm married to someone who belittles everything I do, who thinks I'm worth nothing. Less than nothing. Naomi, I'm so sorry. I can't seem to do anything right. Except on this stage, where you are strong and you're powerful and you're in control. But God wants you to know, Naomi, that he wants to help you become stronger than any character you've ever played. My God, Naomi. I had no idea. What about you, Herbert? How is it in your home? So you're all angels? Live and in person. Herbert, this theater, these people, 
They're your only family, aren't they? What do you mean? Well, as much as you would like people to think that you live your life in the fast lane, your days and your nights are really very lonely. That's why you spend every free minute here at the Egyptian. I have nowhere else to go. I don't have a family. I just fill my date book with places to go, things I'd like to do. It's an encyclopedia of fantasy. Truth is, you guys are the only family that I have. What about me? I come here wishing my life could be one never-ending love scene. If only I could be Juliet in real life, or Camille, or Cleopatra. Women who found a perfect love. And you've always wanted that, haven't you? You know what? I've never even had a boyfriend. I made Johnny up. No one has ever told me they love me. Ever. God knows that, Latrina. And he wants you to know that he loves you perfectly and completely. All of you. And that empty place in your hearts that you fill with this theater, with pretending to be other people, he can fill with his love, if you just ask. Tell them, Wally. They need to know, and they need to know now. I was one of those kids outside. I got caught stealing from one of Ben's old man's stores. But Ben stood up for me. He took me into this theater. And back when it was all about kids. And you know what? I played Jack and the Beanstalk. Right here. I, and I, I climbed higher than I'd ever climbed before. And that's why I never gave up on this place. That's why we can never give up on this place. It's too late, Wally. There's nothing we can do. Wait a minute. Just before Ben died, he, he said something about a new song. He said it would inspire us all again. It would change everything. What is it? Where is his song? It was all in his head. He, he started to write it down, but it was too late. Do you know what inspiration is? Inspiration is something that God puts in your spirit. And Ben's spirit is not lost. Neither is the song he wrote. He taught it to me this morning in eternity. I've been touched by an angel, really touched by an angel. I have hope, I have choice, since I heard that voice telling me all is well. I've been touched by an angel. touched by an angel what a perfect release I can feel the peace happiness words can't tell I know my life will be better somehow I put aside worry and now I can see there's a new life for me. Winter has blossomed as spring. My mind, heart, and body, they sing of the joy in my soul now that love is in complete control. I've been touched by an angel. 
bless the touch of an angel. Now my future is bright as I follow the light my angel has shown to me. I know my life will be better somehow. I put aside worry and now I can see there's a new life for me. Winter has blossomed as spring. My mind, heart and body they sing of the joy in my soul now that love is in complete control. I've been touched by an angel. Bless the touch of an angel. Now my future is bright as I follow the light my angel has shown to me. How to be free. How to stay free How to be me Wonderful, wonderful me I don't know what made these theater geeks change their minds I mean, they were always just ragging on us before I mean, those guys are the reason my dad got sent to prison well, them and the drugs and robbing that pharmacy. All right, truth is, my dad deserves to be in jail. Anyway, they asked me to join them and to get my friends to join them, too. Uh, they want this place to be all about kids. They're talking about a song and angels or something. I don't know. Whatever, things are definitely different now. I don't know, it's not like we had anything else to do. Give my regards to Broadway Remember me to Herald Square Tell all the gang at 42nd Street that I will soon be there. Whisper of how There's a lot of scary things going on in the world right now. You can be a part of the darkness or you can shine a light. I think light is definitely better. <sighs> Who knows? I mean, maybe someday I'll even believe in angels. I got a letter from Grandma. She's still in Africa. Isn't she something? I mean, everybody says they want to help other people. But she's actually out there doing it. I think you were a lot like her. I, um... I want to tell you that I'm getting married, sweetie. I don't know if you can hear me or not, but I had to come out here and say it out loud. He's a good man, Petey. And he loves me. And he's got a little boy about your age that you would have been such a good big brother to. The wedding's tomorrow. And I'll be thinking about you all day. And then they live in Ohio, so... I'll be moving there as soon as I get the house sold. It's going to be so hard to say goodbye. 
That house is all I have left of you, kiddo. Oh, that reminds me. I didn't know where to send these. But I figured maybe you can pass them along somehow. Hmm? I love you so much. And I always will. And you're going to be there with me tomorrow. I know it. I know it. Bye-bye, sweet baby. is today. Hope you can make it. Love, Audrey. <laughs> it's so nice that she remembered us. Yes, it is. I've never forgotten her. Excuse me. Wherever you are going, there. Hi, I hope you don't mind. As Celine said, I could just walk in. My name is Monica. You're here to see the room? So, Tess, we're going to a wedding. But it's just a wedding, right? That's right. We're just invited guests. This is not our assignment. I wish that Gloria could come too. She would love meeting Audrey. Well, she may still get her chance. More to the right. Move down. Down. That's perfect. Gloria, did you add three names to the guest list? No. Nope. Oh, Carla, I did. Uh, Monica, Tess, and Andrew? Yeah, it's a long shot. I don't know if they'll come. We wouldn't have missed it. Oh, you did come! Hey. <laughs> Hello. Hello. You look beautiful. Oh, thank you. Congratulations. Oh, it's so good to see you guys. You got your invitations. Yes, we're so happy for you. Thank you. So where's Mr. Wright? Well, let me introduce you. This is Scott's son, Kyle. Hey, Kyle. Hi. And Scott's dad, George. George? Oh, time we got to meet somebody from Audrey's side. Uh, so where's Scott? Right behind you. Oh, Scott, honey. Hey. I want to introduce you to some old friends. This is Monica. Hello. Hello. And Andrew. Hi. Hi. And this is Tess. Hello. So how do you know Audrey? It's a long story. When Petey was sick, they sort of helped me out. They're special friends, and they've come a long way. Welcome. Pretty much everybody here is Scott's family. They all came in from Ohio, so tomorrow you're my family. In fact, I was wondering, Andrew, if you'd walk me down the aisle. 
I'd, I'd be honored. Hi, everybody. Now that's a tie. You think so? Yeah, that's handsome. Herbie, this is Monica, Andrew, and Tess. Hello. Herbie is Scott's best friend, and he'll be marrying us tomorrow. Yeah, I was just ordained uh, this morning on the internet. Oh, we should probably uh, run through everything again just to make sure we get it right. Uh, Kaya, want to help me with the lighting the candles once more? Sure. Andrew, you're with me. Yes, ma'am. Is it just me, or did you expect to hear Scott say he had heard a lot about us? Mm, she hasn't told him. Mm -mm. Hey, what are you guys doing here? Audrey invited us. She's an old friend. Huh. She's my assignment. I'm supposed to get Audrey to say I do. Oh, is she having second thoughts? What? No, I, I don't think so. Well, but, you know, Scott... Gloria, this is Alex. He's the manager here. Oh, hi. I just have a couple of questions about parking tomorrow. Do you mind? No, not at all. Okay, I need the bridesmaids and the groomsmen at the top of the stairs. Where's the maid of honor? Where's Cornelia? I'm here. Ah, you guys made it! It's so good to see you. How are you? Oh, we're fine, Celine. Oh, I don't go by Celine anymore. I decided to be a fashion designer and Cornelia fits better. You know, like Gucci, Chanel, Cornelia. A fashion designer. Mm hmm I even designed Audrey's wedding dress. Wait till you see it. You're gonna die. <laughs> well, not you. Cornelia! I'm coming. We'll talk later. Okay. Why, she has changed. She must be 16 now. I can't believe how grown up she is. <laughs> so you changed your name from Cornelia to Celine, huh? Wouldn't you? Do you speak any French? Only in France. They speak French in Canada, too, you know. Celine Dion is from Canada. She speaks French sometimes. A music lover, huh? So you gonna rent the room? Well, I'm not sure yet. They won't hear you. Petey's taking a nap and Audrey's probably got her headphones on. Let's just go right in. Come on. It's okay. I practically live here. Okay, at uh, this point, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, oh, here we are, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll welcome everyone and announce the purpose of our gathering, which is to witness a joining of Scott and Audrey in marriage. What is a marriage? A marriage is a union, an agreement between two people who, um, uh, uh, then I'll say, uh, do you, Audrey, take Scott to be your lawfully wedded husband, to promise to stand by him and encourage him in sickness and health, joy and sorrow? For as long as you both shall love. Now, don't, don't say I do that, that you wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow's when you say the real I do, because then you'll really be married. So just, just, well. And then I'll say something like, uh, these witnesses, uh, yay, even the universe has heard your expression of love and your agreement to live in marriage. So we join in celebrating the, uh, blah, 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 uh, by the powers vested in me, I now pronounce you Mr. and Mrs. Scott Morgan. As long as they both shall love, the universe has heard you. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to tell you earlier. Scott's an atheist. You were great. Yeah, but how was I? And you were great. You mean it? I mean it, really. Is there anything you want me to change? Not a thing. Not a thing at all? Oh, hi, Monica. Audrey, may I ask you a question? Sure. Why wasn't God mentioned in your wedding vows? Oh, that. Look, Monica, I know what you're saying, but Scott and I have an understanding. Believe me, it's not a problem. It may not seem like a problem now, but can we talk about this later? I'm just so glad you're here.
You know, Monica, I'm an old choir boy from St. Michael's back in Poughkeepsie. And I must say, that ceremony seemed a bit off to me, too. Whatever happened to God? I don't think God was invited. Well, look on the bright side, Monica. At least we're going to get some great food. <laughs> food. Oh, dear. Uh, could you excuse me a minute? Thank you. <clears throat> Andrew? Um, I, I have a... Well, did you notice somewhere on the invitation where it said something about a, a rehearsal dinner? Yeah, it's in like 15 minutes. Oh, no, it's not because... Ooh, uh, what am I going to do? Plan B. We're going to need two things. The banquet manager and a miracle. Well, the room's yours if you'd like it, but we're completely unprepared to serve a meal. That's all right. We can handle it from here, Mr. Waters. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> what do I do? The wedding party's on the way. There's really only one thing to do now. Father, we thank you for your bounty that we're about to receive. Amen. Amen. Oh. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Dinner is served. So how did your dad meet Audrey? It was at one of those meetings for people who used to drink and stuff. Yeah? Like an AA meeting? Mm, yeah, yeah. Audrey saw me take a bunch of cookies off the table in the back. Uh -huh. She asked if I'd share some with her. So I did. And then my dad came over and they started talking and stuff. And she never ate her cookie. So I ate it. <laughs> and now they're getting married. <laughs> what if I mess up lighting the candles tomorrow? You'll be fine. Hey, partner. How about a dance? Okay. She's avoiding me, Andre. Uh, Monica, you know, people fall in love and they just ignore everything that doesn't quite fit. Frankly, I think there's another question that we should be asking. Who has she actually fallen in love with? Doesn't Kyle remind you of somebody? Oh, uh, he's awake and he wants to meet you. Hi. Hi. There's something else you need to know. You can't get cystic fibrosis from germs or kissing people. You have to be born with it. And you see his mom, she has to do that twice a day, or else all of the mucus and stuff in his lungs gets really thick, and then he can't breathe. Okay, done. So you still want to live here? Absolutely. What's this? Nothing, I was just making a list. And checking it twice. It's, um, it's a list of things I've got to do before I die. Everybody should have one of these. No, it's stupid. I don't think so. Do you mind if I take a look? Let's see. Number one, learn to play the piano. That's an excellent, perfectly achievable goal. Number two, find a good home for Fluffy. Celine's mom will never let her keep him. Number three, find someone else to sing with mom. That's very thoughtful, Petey. Number four, get somebody to shovel the sidewalk for mom when it snows. Five, help mom finish the song. Is that the song you played for me? Yeah. I, um, I thought that if she could just finish one whole song, then she could write a whole bunch of them, you know? Can 
I get everybody's attention, please? Thanks. I just want to say that I've known Scott since uh, Little League. We were in it together. Couldn't get a hit for the life of him. But I'm glad to see he finally made it on base. To Scott and Audrey, two people that prove that if you stay in the game, you'll end up a winner. I'm Cornelia, if you didn't know. I've known Audrey all my life. I love her so much. I'm just so happy to be the maid of honor. I don't know what to say. Monica, would you say something, please? I met Audrey several years ago, and we've been through some very difficult times together. Every corner of creation. I can't do this. I can't do this. Katie didn't think you were ready to read this before, but I think you are now. You knew about it? Yes. Well, I can't do that. I can't write that song. You must, Audrey. Petey needs to know that you'll be okay. But I won't be okay. Yes, you will. that you in my dreams? Yes. God's voice will be heard no matter what. Whether you listen is up to you. I did listen to you before. And look what happened. I wrote a song and my baby died. You wrote a beautiful song, Audrey, that helped Petey to die in peace. <sighs> I'm sorry. So many memories. I don't even know where to begin. But one of my best memories is one that Audrey might repeat for us here. Would you do us the honor of singing the song that you wrote for Petey? Oh, um, I would, but I don't have my guitar. All the colors of Every dream that reaches out That reaches out to find a love begin Every world of every story Every star in every sky Every corner of creation Lives to testify For as long as I shall live I will testify that I'll be a witness In the silence is worth not enough But every breath that Yeah. 
long as I shall live, I will testify to love. I'm sorry, Monica. <laughs> That was some song. Thank you. you wrote that for your son? Yeah, before he died. <laughs> Keep it. Those are very special tears. God counts every one, you know. Yeah, thank you. Hi. We haven't had much of an opportunity to get to know each other. It's been a busy time. I'm glad you're here. It means a lot to Audrey. This might sound strange, but has Audrey mentioned anything to you about angels? No. We steer clear of all that spiritual stuff. I, I know she used to be pretty religious, but I got her to back off all the hallelujah prayers and the crosses and the God stuff. Now she's just kind of generally spiritual and me I've changed too I used to be a full-on atheist and now I'm just an agnostic but marriage is about compromise right well how did you get through AA when they put so much emphasis on a higher power I just think of myself as only on an 11 step program excuse me well Tess I'm not sure about this this is not our assignment. It's Gloria's assignment, and she's here to help Audrey say, I do. You all right? What have you got there? Oh, nothing. Is something on your mind, Cornelia? Oh, well, kind of. See, there was this thing that I was supposed to do, and I didn't do it. And now, I think it might be too late. Oh, it's never too late, baby, if it's the right thing to do. Veggie. Girls' night out has officially begun. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Hold it. Dress there. Pizza over there. Far be it from me to argue with an angel. Okay, I know we need to talk. But first, you gotta admit, besides the God thing, Scott's a pretty great guy. I met him in AA two years ago. His wife had died, and we just connected. Audrey, have you ever heard the phrase, unequally yoked? What do you mean? When a farmer puts two oxen in a yoke, they need to be the same size. And the yoke needs to be placed precisely in the middle. Because the slightest difference will begin to throw them off balance. They may still move forward, but never quite together. And eventually the team will not be able to function. Well, if it's so important to you, why don't you just go up to Scott and light up or something? Prove that God exists. It could be your wedding present to me. Problem solved. I can't do that. Angels go where God sends them. And they speak to the hearts of those that God has prepared for them. Well, what am I supposed to do? 
the last thing that you promised Petey that you would do is testify to love. God's love. But you haven't done that. You've kept silent. And now you're moving from your home. You've moved away from God. You've compromised your life more and more. And with each compromise, you take a step further away from knowing that God exists. Audrey, you were given the gift of knowing the truth. And you have a responsibility to share that gift. Scott is a good man. He's a nice guy who has found a wonderful woman who loves his son. But I don't see the deep love that God wants for you. And I don't see the, the joy of two people in love. In fact, I don't think that you're truly marrying this man at all. I think you're just trying to, to replace Petey. How dare you? You don't know. I'm sorry, Monica. It was a mistake to invite you to my wedding. I'm sorry, Monica. Please don't come back. I didn't mean to hurt you, Audrey. It isn't always easy to hear the truth. But it's important that you do hear it. We'll be praying for your happiness, baby. I think I'm gonna go to bed now. Okay, good night, honey. Good morning, Cornelia. Hi. How are you supposed to walk in these things? <laughs> Don't ask me. The last time I tried a pair of those on, I almost broke an ankle. You look beautiful. Thank you. Did you hear that Monica, Tess, and Andrew won't be coming? Yeah. Monica thinks that Audrey and Scott don't fit well together. I've kind of been thinking the same thing. Have you told Audrey that? No. Why not? Because... I really, really wanted to be made of honor. It, it made me feel like I was finally grown up, you know? Sometimes the most grown up thing you can do is tell a friend the truth. Even if it means giving up something that matters to you. I really wish Tess was here. <laughs> what do you think she'd say if she were? I guess I have to tell Audrey the truth. Maybe that's a good idea. Gloria, could you help me for just a moment? Sure, I'll be there in a minute. So beautiful, Cornelia. It is absolutely perfect. 
I am so proud of you. Thank you. I have something for you. Oh, sweetheart, no presents. You've done enough. This isn't a present. It's something I should have given you a long time ago. I didn't. But you need to see it now. What is that? There's a fire in the building. Please. Get out of here. Not bad. Oh, just find the fire department's on the way. We're going to go. I don't know. Just keep going. Are you seeing Kyle? No, I can't find him. Arrest him. Kyle! We need an ambulance. Kyle! Come on, can we need some help out here at the Hampstead house? I don't know. The nurse just came out and said that Petey's awake, and Scott just went in to see him. So that's all I know. What? You just called him Petey. I meant Kyle. I, I think Monica was right. Cornelia. Here. I was trying to give you this up in the room. What is it? It's a letter from Petey. He asked me to give it to you before he died. If you ever decided to get married. Dear Mom, if you're reading this, you must be getting married. I knew you would someday. Or at least I hoped you would. I know the angels are coming to get me soon. So I've got to say this now. I hope he's great. I hope that you are the most important thing in his life. And that he makes you feel like singing. But you'll always be my sunshine. And I hope we'll all be together someday. Tell him I'll be up in heaven waiting for you guys. Love, Petey. How can he ever meet Scott up in heaven if Scott doesn't even believe that there is one? Oh, God. I'm really sorry, Audrey. I'm really, really, really sorry. Honey, it's okay. Kyle's gonna be fine. He just inhaled a little bit of smoke. Oh, thank God. Don't thank God. Think that guy, Andrew. He's the one that pulled Kyle out of the fire. Andrew. Look, why don't you go back, get out of the dress, and then I'll meet you there, and we'll figure out what we're gonna do. You know something, honey? You've always had an understanding about life that Scotty never had. He told me how lucky he was to meet you. But I always thought he was blessed. And I guess when it comes down to it, that's the difference between you two. And I'm afraid that makes all the difference. You do what you have to do, sweetheart. Bye, George.
Aubrey. I need to tell you something about Monica, Andrew, and Tess. They're angels. You're serious? They came when Petey was dying, and they helped us. And they showed me that God is real, and that he loves me. And then no matter what happens, he's always with me. If that's what you want to believe, that's fine. I don't believe it. I know it. I've seen it. And I promised I would testify to it. But I haven't. Not to you. Scott, when you look at all the wonderful things in this life, your beautiful son and all the love and miracles in your life, don't you ever feel like there's someone you want to thank for it all? I'm sorry, Audrey, I don't. I do. Scott, I love you. I love you too. God has been such a big part of my life for so long. And when I met you, I let him go. And I miss him. And I think if we got married, we'd be speaking a different language to each other. Maybe it wasn't meant to be, huh? I'm sorry. I guess I better get back to the hospital. Scott, I will always love you and Kyle. You were right, Monica. I am sorry, Audrey. I was so lonely. You thought it was easier to leave God out of it rather than let him get in the way of the relationship. I never thought anybody would ever want me again. I know how badly you want someone in your life. And I know how much you've been through. But God wants you to be happy too, Audrey. But not at the cost of losing that which is most precious. God loves you so much and he wants to be first in your heart so that he can make a safe place there for everything else that is good. And God has a message for you. One day there will be someone waiting for you at the end of the aisle. And when the time comes for you to be together, it will feel right, completely right, and then you will know love and joy and peace just as surely as you know that God is real. He's here with us right now, Audrey. Won't you invite him back into your life? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I want was lost 
But now I am found Was blind But now I see Miss Carmichael? Oh, Alex, hi. That was uh, beautiful. Thank you. Are you all right? I will be. You know, I think you will be. Do you need to ride home? That's all right. I think we've been in enough trouble. It's no trouble. That's very nice. Thank you. I'd love a ride home. simple choice. On September 21st, 1994, an angel named Monica walked barefoot out of the desert and into American hearts and homes. The song that accompanied her journey was, I Will Walk With You. It was more than a theme song. It was a reminder of the timeless message that you are loved and that angels are sent every day to walk with you no matter where you are on the road. Tonight begins the last episode of Touched by an Angel. And as you watch it, may you find encouragement in the words, comfort in the music, and great joy in your spirit as you are reminded once more that the road you walk may seem long, but you do not walk alone. When you walk down the road Heavy burden, heavy, heavy load. I will rise and I will walk with you. I'll walk with you till the sun don't even shine. Walk with you every time I tell you I'll walk with you. Believe me, I'll. Walk with you. Do you let that thing get that close? I was just thinking about something. I've been daydreaming a lot lately. I imagine that stress would have that effect on the human form, even if there is an angel inside. It's not stress. Not exactly, Tess. It's just that I want it over with. Well, you can't rush these things, baby. It takes time to evaluate an angel's performance. There are records that have to be reviewed. There are interviews that have to be documented. Interviews? With whom? With me and Andrew and Gloria and all the other angels you've ever worked with. With you? Well, that's a good sign, isn't it? Not necessarily. Because I have to be completely honest and completely impartial. Now, you know, I want you to have this promotion but it's not going to be up to me. It's going to be up to the father. It's going to happen, though, Tess. I know it will. 
and then we'll be supervisors together. What is it? Don't you know what I've been doing all these years, baby? I've been training you to take my place. I don't understand. Well, when this assignment is over, the father has some new work for me to do. I don't know what it is, but I do know I can't be here with you. You mean that that this is our last assignment? No. Now, nobody knows better than an angel that there are no real goodbyes. Yes, this is the last assignment I'll ever give you. But that's why I want you to do your best work ever. I want to be proud of you, baby. Now, do you remember this place? Yes. This is where you gave me my very first assignment. I never could resist a little symbolism. Well, the assignment is the same. You get on the bus and you follow it until the father tells you what he wants you to do. Can you do that? Oh, yes, but... No buts. Now you get yourself together. Here it comes. You, Tessa. I love you too. <laughs> I go on, go on. Your tickets in your pocket. And if you need me, baby, I'll be there. I know. I first met Monica when she was in Annunciations, and then she was transferred to the choir, briefly. But she did a bang-up job on search and rescue. And since she's been under my supervision, I I've never had a complaint. She's very conscientious and very compassionate. And she gets very, very close to her assignments. Something wrong? No, I'm sorry. 
It's just that I'm looking for someone. I don't know who yet, but I don't think it's you. Well, now that's a shame. Doesn't mean I can't make a new friend, though. I'm Monica. I'm Zach. So, Zach, what do you do? I'm kind of a traveling handyman. Like in the old days, a uh, man would hit the road, follow the seasons, work wherever he found the need. Sounds very poetic. <laughs> I just like to see what's going on in the world. How about yourself? I, um, I travel a lot, and I sort of meet people and help them. Kind of like an angel. Uh, yeah, kind of. So, where are you headed? Same place you are. How do you know? Because well, there's only one stop left. That's Ascension. And we're the last on the bus. Ah. Oh, then I guess that's where I'm going. <laughs> Good. You could use an angel there. Why? You'll see. Monica's always been extremely patient with me, and, and very knowledgeable, very worldly. No, no, not worldly, uh, ethereal, no. See, I, I mean in the world, but not of the world. Y you know what I mean? I'd like to mention that Monica is very honest. Exceedingly, achingly, horribly honest. And then the... There's that charming tendency to uh, miss the, the big picture. But of course, that's only because she's, well, a bit of a, a dreamer. How did you let that thing get that close? Monica is a very strong angel. I've seen her stand against the devil time and time again. Unfortunately, the more she fights him, the better he gets to know her. And now he's like a rattlesnake who knows exactly where and how to strike right at her heart. Monica, we're here. A cup of coffee? A cup of coffee sounds lovely. Well, I know the best place in town. Actually, the only place in town. So no luggage, no one to meet you at the bus. You really are a mystery lady. Well, you did say this town needed an angel. Yeah. Can't you tell? It's Saturday, isn't it? So where are all the children? on the 
Okay, we'll be right with you. Joey? Joey? It's me, Monica. I'm really glad you came. I think that Mr. Beans needs an angel. Where have you been? Did you hear? Joey, you know this lady? What is it, Joey? Where's Wayne? Wayne. He said something, Wayne. He talked to her. Joey? Joey? I know you're glad to see Monica, but you need to let go. Get back to work now. It's okay, Joey. I'm here now. So how long have you known Monica? Oh, just a few hundred miles worth. We sat together on the bus. She seems to be a very special lady. You have no idea. Does your friend want coffee? Best I remember, she likes a lot of it. And a lot of cream and sugar. Ah, that smells good. You staying here with friends? I haven't decided yet. Thanks for the coffee. Thanks, Randy. I hate to tell you this, but I don't think you're going to find a lot of work in this town. Forgive me, but there seems to be a lot of things around here that need repair. I could stay busy for a year just fixing up your main street. Didn't used to look like this. When Joey and I moved here a few years ago, this was a pretty little town. Very peaceful place. Actually, they hardly needed a sheriff at all. That's why I took the job. But things change. Wayne, where are the children? I guess you knew I got married. No. She was a teacher here. Was? She, uh... She died about a year ago. Actually, she was killed. Along with almost every kid in this town. Oh, hey. I heard about that. Morning, Mayor. I got an old friend I'd like you to meet. Oh, my God. I never thought I'd see you again. Hello. Fifteen years ago, I fell asleep behind the wheel of the car. On I-15 between Barstow and Vegas, you uh, <gasps> dropped by to wake me up. My. Hello. I was in search and rescue then. I never forgot you. Yeah, it's funny how humans like to say all the time, what a coincidence, or man, this is your lucky day. Monica doesn't let you get away with that. She says there's good things happen, bad things happen, inexplicable things happen. But if you give good luck the credit, or, or bad luck the blame, then you're not giving God the chance to give it meaning. See? Every time I bump it or move it, the darn thing just turns off. And before I know it, my coffee's cold. Let me take a look. It's a nice place you've got here. Thanks. Whose pink bicycle is that outside? It, uh... It was my little girl's. She loved pink. Everything had to be pink. 
clothes, walls, her bicycle. This is a small town. There's just one school. Every child from kindergarten to 12th grade was having lunch in the cafeteria. The boiler exploded. It ignited a propane tank. We lost them all. 46 children and eight teachers. One of them, Wayne's wife, Judy. the children were killed? No, a few kids were homesick that day. It was real hard on them after that. Eighteen families have moved out already, and there'll be more. Those of us who stayed, we just don't know how to help each other. And Joey stopped speaking? Joey always helped with the kids at recess. He was walking up to the school when it blew up. And he hasn't spoken until today. Joey talked. Well, what did he say? Not much. Why? A lot of people think this shouldn't have happened. Some have said the boiler was old and should have been fixed and replaced a long time ago. A lot of bad feelings around here and nowhere to put them. I guess people need somebody to blame. Blame? For who? The murderer. Eddie. I was there, Wayne. You weren't. You didn't hear what Joey said. I know my brother. Eddie. The lady is just here for a visit. We don't need to burden her with our local theories. I need to get going. Monica, I'll see you later. Mary. Well, that was fast. Yeah, the prong was bent a little. No charge. Well, then no charge on the coffee either. Thanks. Randy? Wish I could say there was a lot more work for you in this town, but folks aren't in a fixing up mood. Uh, gonna give it a try anyway. Suit yourself. I guess you'll need a place to stay. The local motel closed down a couple of months ago. But I've got a shed in the back of my place you're welcome to. Is that a kind offer or a way for the town sheriff to keep his eye on me? <laughs> Little of both, I guess. Well, thanks, I accept. Get your stuff, I'll walk you over. Okay. See you at 5.30, Joey. Show me your town. Absolutely. Let's go. Still divorced. Kids in college. After you saved my bacon, I made a few changes. I stopped working 24-7. Quit the big law firm in the city and became a country lawyer. Small town, clean air, good people. <laughs> Very good people. It's hard to see them hurt this much. I wish there was something I could do to help. Maybe that's why you're here? I don't know. I didn't want to be mayor. Nobody did. The other one moved away. He lost two children. That belonged to Eddie's little boy, Kenny. He was eight years old. He loved trucks. He wanted to be a mechanic, just like his dad. Eddie won't take it home. Nobody else has the heart to throw it away. There's probably another one in there somewhere. Eddie's six-year-old like trucks, too. This is a friend of mine, Monica. Monica, Dr. Jean. She's my poker buddy and my ally on the town council. Hey, Peter, how you doing? 
Okay, I guess. Good to meet you, Monica. Hello. This is Peter Lockwood. Hello. I saw your name on the church marquee. Well, part of your name. Yes, I should do something about that. I'm um, uh, on sabbatical. You wanted to talk to me about something? Yes. Excuse us, Monica, Peter. I'll be right back and then we'll have a look at your shoulder. You a reporter? Oh, no. Good. Because they never really got it right. Got what right? What it was like before. You had to be here. You had to know the children. To know what he took away that day. Who? The devil. Satan himself moved into this town and he's still here. Eddie Markowski wants to call an emergency town meeting. What? I was in the cafe with him for over an hour. He never said a word to me. You remember the guy from Chicago who was looking at property to buy here last year? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, Eddie says he's got a proposition for us. What kind of proposition? I don't know, but it can't be good. Honest to God, Mike, this whole town is going to hell in a handbasket. What do you have there? I was in my office that morning, and my daughter... Macy stopped off on her way to school. She uh, she handed this to me and said, "Daddy, do you want to make some Easter eggs tonight?" <clears throat> I keep waiting for the right time to make them for her. I think. Maybe today. And then today comes and the colors stay in the bag. You remember the story of Easter? Death came on Friday, life on Sunday. But there was a long very hard day in between. Yes, of course. We're all of us stuck here in Saturday, aren't we? I delivered every one of those kids. A few of their parents, too. They were beautiful. The minute I saw this place, I had to buy it, but the owner wouldn't sell until I agreed to let her stay. The piano teacher. Yeah. There she is. And all others. She's a remarkable character. She taught half the children in this town to play the piano. She calls them her kids. She filled this place with music. Can't imagine living here without her. And her students? They're gone. All gone. You see that bag there? Belonged to her granddaughter. She loved Beethoven and Chopin. She forgot to take it home with her the night before the accident. Now I'm not allowed to touch it. She says it's evidence. Evidence? She's had a really hard life. She was abused by her husband, lived on the street for a while. Finally reconciled with her family, only to see both her grandchildren die in one day. Her daughter was one of the teachers at the school. And her son-in-law couldn't stand the loss, and he killed himself. So now she's developed this very strange obsession. All she talks about is the the assassination of President Kennedy. Ah, dear. Ah. 
lucky story. Well, somebody assassinated him, but nobody's ever been to Dallas. People lie. What are all these books? Research and evidence, theories and responses to theories, diagrams and random notes, witnesses, suspects. Are we talking about the Kennedy assassination? What do you know about it all of a sudden? You know her. Right next to Parkland Hospital. Well, that and that can't stay there. There's too many questions. Sophie? That's Dallas. I don't know all that goes to New Orleans. Sophie? On uh, Elm Street. <sighs> well, Monica. I could have used you hours ago. I know. I'm sorry that I'm late. There's a whole new theory that needs to be examined. At the time of the assassination, Wayne's little brother, Joey, that poor baby, saw the whole thing. Right, he was standing right there in front of the school book depository. Boom! He passes right out. And when he comes to, he is babbling about the man. Where is the man? What happened to the man in the school? Now, who is that man? I want him in here to examine him, question him. Is it true? Did Joey see a man at the school? When Joey woke up, he told Eddie he saw a stranger in the school. That was enough to keep folks wondering. Wondering if the children were murdered? You never know in what direction it's coming from. Sometimes the underpass, sometimes from the grassy knoll, and then sometimes, sometimes, sometimes they just blow up the whole motorcade. The whole motorcade. I know. Well, we worked together when she was in search and rescue. She was terrific. Great sense of timing. Timing is everything in that job, so... I wasn't surprised when she got promoted to caseworker. She's... a natural. I mean, she totally gets the whole human mentality thing. But in a good way. A really good way. Well, there's, um... that door at uh, Dr. Jean's. Uh, right, right. And uh, I was thinking I would talk to the preacher about fixing the sign out in front of the church. Sophie's always complaining about some loose hinges on her piano bench. Well, that should keep you busy. <laughs> well, good morning, Joey. He used to talk a lot, huh? Oh, yes. Especially to Mr. Beans. He was this funny little green teddy bear with brown ears and a, a red ribbon. Whatever Joey has locked in his mind, he would have shared it with Mr. Beans. Have you ever been to Dallas? Uh, yes, ma'am. You have? I have to have dates and uh, uh, corroborating documentation and tickets and receipts. Have, have I ever debriefed you before? No, ma'am. <clears throat> I've got a question for you. <laughs> they all have questions, I can tell you that. I heard you play the piano. You'd be kind enough to play something for me. Some Chopin or Beethoven? No. That's all been classified. Oh, but, um, I've been cleared at the security level. You have? Oh, yeah. Well, this is highly irregular. It breaks all of the protocol.
works like a charm, Zach. How much do I owe you? Oh, no charge. Oh, I have to pay you something. Hey. A new patient. <laughs> I'm not a veterinarian. I know, I know, but... Baby's a baby, right? Crazy, Wayne. That bike's been out there a year and nobody's touched it. Now suddenly it's gone? Who would do a thing like that? Hey, Joey. Got something for you. Mr. Beans! I fix toasters, I sew teddy bears. What can I say? Quite an impression here. This town could use a few more people like you. Why don't you call up some of your angel friends, see if they want to come over and play? Uh -huh. You laugh now, but um, someday I might just surprise you. All right, everybody. Take your seats, please. Looks like just about everybody's here. Pastor, where's your paper bag? Oh, I must have left it at home. How did you recognize me without it? <laughs> It's the first laugh I've heard around here in a long time. Sounds good. But we have business to talk about. Is Mr. Carver here? Indeed I am, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> For those of you who haven't met Mr. Carver, he's a lawyer from Chicago, and he has some business he'd like to discuss with us all. Thank you. I represent a venture capital consortium interested in buying your town and converting the land into commercial property, specifically the world's largest retail complex of factory outlet stores. Excuse me. Uh, you mean you want to buy everything, the whole town? Everything. It will mean a great deal of money for each of you. Then we can get the hell out of here and get on with our lives. It's not that simple, Eddie. Everyone here has lost a great deal, and money is not going to take the pain away. No, what would take the pain away is some justice. But nobody's looking for that. Nobody's trying to find the man that did this to us. We don't know there was a man. No, I know. Joey wasn't the only one who saw somebody that day. I think I did, too. Let's just think this through. I've thought it through, and I say sell. You know, I've got nothing holding me here but a boatload of bills in an empty house that I can barely stand to be in. What about you, Peter? What do you say about this? I don't know. When my mama started the cafe 20 years ago, this was a different town. We were on our way up. People moving in. Babies being born. We had a future. But that future's gone now. The future died in 1963. 30 years ago, I swore an oath to dedicate myself to healing people. I've done the best I could with the people of this town, with the children of this town. But I don't know how to do that now. 
I keep wondering if we can't heal together. Then maybe we should try it apart. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Mayor. Would you mind an observation from an outsider? No, please, Monica. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Uh, no one could visit your town and not feel the terrible loss that you've all suffered. And yet even since I've been here, I've, I've seen a change in so many of you. Perhaps you haven't noticed it. Maybe it's because I'm an outsider, but That's I... That's right, you are an outsider, lady. You can't tell us what to do with this town. Neither can I, but I guarantee you, you will never get a better offer. Well, then, we'll just take what you're offering under consideration. I say we vote on it right now. Let's get an idea about where we stand. All right. But this is not official. Everyone in favor of and considering Mr. Carver's and offer, raise your hand. So. Is there anybody who wants to stay? Who the hell do you think you are, pal? I like this town. There's good, gentle-hearted people here. A small town like this is an oasis. In it is nice here. But how can you stay here after all you've lost? My guy hasn't lost anything. He's only been here a week. I think you just want a piece of the deal. Our deal. Well, it's not going to happen. I've been keeping an eye on you. Has anybody noticed how things started disappearing around here after he showed up? Excuse me. Did you say that he's only been here a week? Yeah, that's right. I don't think that's possible. No, it's true. He is me. No, I was here a year ago making my initial assessment of this problem. And I saw somebody at that school that day. I am almost certain that it was him. Right around lunchtime. I knew it wasn't an accident. Folks, let's not jump to any conclusions here. He does look for me. Have you seen him before you were in? Yes, but I, I knew it. Yes, I remember. I do. Zach, say something. My baby was in that school! You killed my kid, you son of a... Daddy, hey, Daddy! Hey, Daddy! Don't matter! Folks around here have been looking for somebody to pin that explosion on for a long time now. Are you arresting me? Let's call it protective custody. Are you all right? Yeah. Folks like you take a big chance by dropping out of society. No credit card, no bill, no friends keeps you nice and free. But always a little bit suspicious. I just never stayed in one place long enough to have a, a, an address. Sorry to do this to you. Do what you gotta do, Sheriff. 